What is going on everyone? It's Justin here and today I'm here to talk about products that Apple announced this morning including the Apple Watch Series 6, the Apple Watch SE, the iPad Air 4 and the iPad 8. So obviously we are expecting another event next month which is going to talk about the iPhone 12 which I'm personally very excited for but if you guys are excited for the videos of these products I'm going to be reviewing them as soon as they come out and get my hands on them as soon as possible so make sure you subscribe to the channel drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below with your favorite feature so the first main product that Apple announced in today's event is the Apple Watch Series 6. And I feel like over the past few years, the design of the Apple Watch has been quite good. Since the announcement of the Series 4 a couple years ago and the small redesigns in the larger display, smaller bezels, and also the health features, as well as the introduction of the always on display last year, this year's Apple Watch didn't really have to see any major changes, but there were definitely a few complaints from last year that people hope to see addressed in the Series 6. So this year's Apple Watch looks exactly the same. There's no changes on the outside, and from looking at it, it is gonna look identical to what you saw in the Series 5 and the Series 4. It comes in quite a few new colors, including the blue, gold, red, and also a graphite one. I personally think the graphite and the blue looks the best, but let me know what your favorite is. It does have improved water resistance though, so if you plan to go like surfing or in like high water pressure situations, then it is definitely going to hold up, but I feel like for most general consumers, you're not really gonna be needing these extreme measures. It is just good to have. In the Apple Watch Series 5, the performance was pretty much the same as a Series 4. It didn't really need to have any changes because as long as the watch is able to power itself with no issues, then I feel like processor updates are not really needed. On the chipset side of things, this Apple Watch has the S6 processor with the U1 ultra wideband and it also has 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi compatibility. And even though the chip itself only has a 20% improvement in speed because it didn't really have to have a massive upgrade, I think the biggest upgrade is actually the connectivity options because with Siri built in and with the Wi-Fi base, being able to load things faster is always a plus. So one of the biggest complaints in last year's Apple Watch was the battery life. And you were able to get 18 hours in a best case scenario, but with the introduction of the always on display, if you wanted to use that, you definitely noticed that the battery life was much worse. And I feel like that is something that I would personally want to keep on if I was an everyday Apple Watch user. On the always on display side of things, it is 2.5 times brighter when outdoors, but the battery life didn't really see any improvement aside from in some fitness activities. One good new feature in my opinion though, is that you can charge the entire watch in just 1.5 hours. I think one of the bigger updates though is that this year's watch is able to track blood oxygen levels whereas in previous years I feel like Apple has really been establishing themselves as a health leader in wearables. Last year's model had ECG introduction and that has been improved this year but I feel like with blood oxygen levels that kind of expands that ecosystem of health products that work in conjunction with your device and also alert you when something needs attention. So those are the updates for the Apple Watch Series 6 and I feel like it is definitely something where if you have the Apple Watch Series 5 and you really rely on it, some of the features are going to be more important to you than others. The next product though is the iPad Air 4 and this is probably the product that I'm most excited for from today's announcements and that is because it is a lower priced iPad that has the same great design as the iPad Pro. You might have noticed Apple hasn't changed the design of the iPad Pro in a couple years and I feel like this is definitely one of the best updates to design that Apple has made in recent memory. When they redesigned the iPad Pro in 2018, it had smaller bezels and it also had more of a squared off design and I feel like it is just a much better look without the home button because it just uses all that screen real estate and it is definitely a good display. The iPad Air 4 from a distance looks pretty much the exact same. You've got the smaller bezels, lack of home button, and also these squared off edges. The iPad Air 4 comes in many different colors for the first time in the iPad lineup, which in my opinion looks a little bit weird, but you have the choice between a blue, a green, a pink, a gray, and a silver. So personally, I would say to stick between the silver and the gray, but you do have many choices. This iPad uses a brand new A14 Bionic chip, which is 16 cores and has a five nanometer process. This is a chip that we expect to see in the next generation of iPhone. This A14 processor on paper is actually technically more powerful than the current generation iPad Pro. The display is 10.9 inches and has a 2360 by 1640 liquid retina display, which is LCD. It does have true tone and a wide P3 color gamut. This iPad also has its touch ID on the top power button, which is the smallest fingerprint sensor that Apple has ever put into a device. 
The iPad Air 4 also works with the Apple Pencil 2, which makes sense. You can charge it on the top with a magnet, which is way better than having it stick out on the bottom. But as someone who didn't wear the Apple Watch every day, but I use the iPad on an everyday basis, I'm personally most excited for this product and can't wait to review it. It starts at a price of $599 and is available next month. I think what Apple has done a very good job in this year is offering better value in the products. So whether it is the MacBook lineup, dropping it in price by $100 and giving you more storage, or if you look at the iPhone SE 2020, which people have been waiting for for quite a while, the same processor as the current iPhone 11 and 11 Pro, but at a price of $399 and a very comparable camera when it comes to daylight photos. So when it comes to design, the Apple Watch SE follows the same design as the Series 4, which is pretty much the same as the 5 and 6. Some of the notable differences from the Series 3 will be a thinner bezel and also thinner overall form factor, which are things that I really enjoyed as an update in the last hardware refresh. The chip inside the Apple Watch SE is the S5 that we found in last year's flagship model, but the fact that it shares the same design is what I'm most excited for and has many of the same features as the flagship at just $279. The fourth and final product I'm gonna talk about in this video is the iPad 8. And this has always been the model that has been a great value for most, and in terms of power, is able to suit most of the everyday needs for like kids, students, and even everyday users. The best part about it though is that it came in at an extremely competitive price point and this year's model comes in at $329. It has updated power with the 812 Bionic chip which is a 6 core CPU and 4 core GPU that gives you 2 times faster graphics. Up to 10 hours of battery life, the 10.2 inch retina display, and at the price of $329, if you're trying to decide between like a Chromebook or any other tablet on the market essentially, I feel like it is such a good value for anyone who is hoping to pick up the iPad and get into the ecosystem. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video of the newest Apple announcements today. If you guys are excited for videos of those, make sure you let me know down in the comment section below because if everything comes at once, I'm gonna have to pick which one goes first. So that'll be good insight and I'll see you all in the next video.